All right, today we will be looking on physics values, specifically capacity, heat capacity, and latent heat. So heat capacity is a deal with the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin. What does this mean? Let's visualize this one. Um, if you have a container of water, and the water has a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, it would be the heat energy required to raise the temperature of the water to 31 degrees Celsius. The symbol of this would be a capital C and the SI unit would have been joules per Kelvin. Specific heat capacity has one difference. It would be the heat energy required to raise one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin. Same concept, water, but now we're looking at one kilogram and we're gonna look at raising that by a temperature of one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. The SI unit of this will be joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the equation for the relationship between heat capacity and specific heat capacity would be equal to capital C for heat capacity is equal to common C for specific heat capacity times mass. In order to calculate the heat energy absorbed or lost by our system, it would have been equal to mc delta t. m would have been your mass in kilograms, c would be your specific heat capacity, delta t would have been your change in temperature. So let's look at an example of this. How much joules of energy are required to raise a temperature of 500 grams of copper from 16 degrees Celsius to 116 degrees Celsius? Given that the specific heat capacity of copper is 400 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, first you write your equation, EH is equal to MC delta T. You need to convert that 500 grams to kilograms by dividing by a thousand you'll get 0 0.5 your specific heat capacity is 200 sorry 400 times the subtraction of 116 minus 16 you'll end up with 200 times 100 therefore you need 20,000 joules of energy our next example is going to ask us how much heat is absorbed when 500 grams of water is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. Given that the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per, sorry, joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Same equation. You're going to convert again from your grams to your kilogram. It's just coincidental that the two masses are the same. Your Specific heat capacity of water is 4,200, so track those two temperatures, then you end up with 21,000 joules. The next one we're looking at is heat transfer. If you are transferring heat, for example, if you have heat a metal and the metal is at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, you put, that, you put this in some water and the water we move from 30 degrees Celsius to maybe 35 degrees Celsius. All that energy gain is actually from the energy loss by the metal. So heat loss is equal to heat gain by the cold body. So we're gonna look at an example of this. So let's look here. When 0 0.1 kilograms of a metal at 100 degrees Celsius is dropped into 0 0.15 kilograms of water, at 25 degrees Celsius. This final temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So this is the final temperature of the metal as well as the water. If the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, calculate the specific heat capacity of the metal. So we went ahead and used subscripts. Since we're on top of the mass of the metal, we're gonna call this M, subscript M for mass of metal, mass of water, we can use m subscript w for water. 
this is not a standard um, temperature of metal initial temperature of metal was 100 initial temperature of water was 25 final temperature of everything would have been 30 we don't know the specific capacity of the metal but we know the specific capacity of water we're going to use the principle heat energy loss is equal to heat energy gain or mass of our metal would have been 0 0.1 times cm we don't know the specific capacity times the change in temperature that the metal actually went through remember our initial temperature was 100 degrees celsius but our final temperature is 30 therefore we actually have a change of 70. on the other hand we actually have a mass of a metal of 0 0.15 our specific heat capacity of metal is actually 4000 200 and the change that we actually are now gone for the water was 30 minus 25 therefore that's a five degree change we went ahead and found out that on the left hand side of our equation is equal to 0 0.7 cm which is specific capacity of metal is equal to 3150 therefore we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.7 we end up with the metal has not having a specific capacity of 4,500 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Let's take another example. You can pause your video for this one. Now we're going to look at that metal again. And we're also going to put it in water. Pause your video, try it, and see if you're able to answer this one. So we're going to write what we know. Mass of metal is equal to 0.2 kilograms. Mass of water is equal to 0.2. Kind of strange. Temperature, initial temperature of metal was 2000. Final temperature of everything is 40. Initial temperature of water is 20. The specific heat capacity of water does not change. And we're expected to find the, the specific heat capacity for metal. We went ahead, put the mass of metal 0 0.2 times the specific, specific capacity of the metal time a change in temperature which is going to be 200 minus 40 is equal to 0 0.2 times 2400 2000 sorry 4200 times 40 minus 20 we end up with a specific capacity of metal as being 525 joules per kilogram per kelvin there's a big discrepancy here in terms of the values but we're just working on our calculation i think there might be another question there i'm going to skip past this one i want to go into latent heat latent heat pretty much mean late heat late heat what happens is that we notice that whenever there's a change in state there's not normally a change in mass sorry change in temperature what happens is that we believe that all the energy which the system has Will be going into breaking the bonds physical bonds to change from one state to another just like how you said water about pure water about at 100 degrees celsius we're not expecting temperature of the water itself to move from 100 degrees celsius until all the water is boiled therefore the same thing ice we do expect ice temperature to move from zero degrees celsius until all the ice has melted and this is the concept of latent heat so what's going to happen now, we're going to talk about latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. When you're specific latent heat actually, when you're changing from a solid to a liquid, you look at specific latent heat of fusion. When you change from a liquid to a gas, you look at specific latent heat of vaporization. So we have associated equation. EH is the heat energy needed to change the temperature from a LM means mass, LV is specific latent heat of vaporization. Clearly looking at changing from a liquid to a gas vaporization. Now fusion would be a little bit more difficult to remember. Um, heat H is equal to MLF. So this is gonna be our equation where our M is mass, F is specific latent heat of fusion, and LV is specific latent heat of vaporization. The uniform, the uniform specific latent heat is joules per kilogram. We'll be looking at one question before I go. So we're going to look at how much heat energy is needed to change 20 kilograms of water 
So our twenty grams of water from zero degrees Celsius to one hundred degrees Celsius. Let's look at how we do that. Now, what I want normally like to do when I'm looking on this question is to draw a what I call a what would be called a heating curve. So let's sketch an heating curve for this one. I'm gonna put it in color and I'm gonna give you each change I expect. Now we like to use water because persons actually know how water functions and it's common knowledge where temperature the change in water. So now we're gonna have zero degrees Celsius draw this in red and I expect when heated water remained remain at zero. After it remains at zero, I expect to have sorry. I expect to have liquid water going up and I'm going to assume it's pure water I need blue keep on making that same mistake and then afterwards I'm going to actually have steam another change in energy now this is going to be zero and this should be around 100 degrees Celsius now, based on this question, I'm going to expect to use my EH, put this in red, I'm going to expect to use EH, type it instead, for this portion here, I'm going to expect to have EH, is equal to m e f for my energy absorber for my energy absorber i'll be using e h is equal to m c delta t let me find give myself i'm going to find delta oh it's right here delta t Since that's a change in temperature and the last one I'll be looking at EH is equal to MLV so that will give me the total energy that I'm looking for looking here I'm gonna separate this here so now our first equation I'm gonna look at the energy needed to melt ice and here I expect to have liquid and solid so let's look at this portion here i'm gonna put it in red e the energy needed to absorb latent heat of fusion so our mass we're gonna convert 0 0.20 grams to kilograms always convert it from grams to kilograms and you end up with 0 0.02 times this latent heat Specific latent heat of fusion of ice, so it's going to be 33400. That's a standard you'll be given this value by your examination. Don't need to remember it. Times those two. Give me a second. 33. And I end up with 6,680 joules of energy just to convert that ice to raise water from a temperature of zero degrees to a temperature of one hundred degrees. Now let's look at that. You have zero point zero two. The specific capacity of water, because you're looking at water now, which is 4,200, times the change in temperature is going to be 100 minus 0, and that will give us 0 0.02 times 4,200 times 100, 
and that will give you 8,400 joules. The last portion is the heat energy needed to raise the temperature to change from water at 100 degrees Celsius to steam at 100 degrees Celsius, which is going to be called MLV, same mass, 0 0.02 times 226000, should be four zeros, point check in my calculator, that's going to be 0 0.02 times 226.234. And that will equal to 45,200 joules. Total energy needed would have been is equal to our 45,200 plus or plus or 8,000 plus plus or 8,000 plus 6680 and that will be equal to that will be equal to 62,280 joules of energy would we'll actually need to raise ice 20 grams of ice from 0 degrees celsius to 100 degrees celsius and pretty much the change is on the go all right stay tuned for more videos see you guys next time